Hello, holiday people. So we are in Times Square and it is Christmas. So it is a season of giving and we're gonna give someone in need a blanket to stay warm during this weather because it is very cold outside and there are definitely people in need of help. So I'm going to try to find somebody who might look like they need a blanket and is out here in the cold. It is below 30. So New York can be very rough on the homeless during this time of the year because there's not many places to go, shelters are packed, and there's snow on the ground. So we're gonna see if we can find somebody to help, spare a few bucks to, and even get their life story and how they ended up there. So stay tuned. All right, so what's your name and how long have you been homeless for? Okay, my name is Lester Stoop. I'm homeless since March. I was in the Salvation Army prior to, and uh, when COVID had struck, things got really petty. And, yeah. uh, you know, just you have to stand to the right. You can walk at this speed. Why are you holding in the left hand? Why are you in the right? I mean, that petty because they were beating us and we were no longer working. Right. So it was costing, and it would be for real. You know, so uh, <clears throat> with the pettiness and a, you know, a difficult roommate, I ended up being removed from the program and, and left stranded at 34th Street Station. Um, the DHS was nice enough, I guess about, I was uh, 17 days on the street with the same clothes and sleeping outside. <clears throat> and DHS walked up on me right. on 34th and 7th. At two o'clock in the morning, it was raining, and when they when they came to get me, they didn't just, you know, they they saved me, they rescued me. I needed a place to go, shower, and get clean, right. and they did. And I was very grateful when they said, "If we give you a place to go, will you go there?" And I said, "Yes, I'll go." I threw no shade, and I went. Right. And I'm still in that room, thank God, that I do have that room. And it's a little difficult for me to do my laundry because the machine downstairs costs money, and it's five bucks to do a load, and it's hard for me. You know, late in the month to come up with five bucks to do my laundry. Right. You know? Are you from New York originally? Um, no, I'm originally from Trenton, New Jersey, but I came here in 2016 and I've been here since. My well, driver's license is trans changed over to New York. I right. Do. I am a New York resident. Wow. So, so what has been like, I guess, your current luck with the shelters? Have they been over capacity? Um, the shelter that I'm in right now, I live in the Aladdin, which is 317 West 45th Street. And I have to say nothing bad about the place other than... Is, that's, is that a hotel? Uh, well... It's, I think it's sort of like a hotel that has been remodeled, but it's not a hotel. Okay. Uh, it has something to do with the plays in Moulin Rouge and those places, like where those people who come up to do shows, I guess, and that's where they stay. Right. But they turn that into a shelter. Wow. Where they can let you stay there. So I do have a room with my own kid. Yeah. You know, and there's food downstairs. It, the food is not the greatest, but it's a kosher black tray. It's a uh, microwave, easily microwaved. And, you can put something in your belly, so... Yeah, you know, so, I guess, how would you say, like, your journey, or how how did your journey lead to homelessness? Was it ever because of drug abuse, or...? Yes, yes, I've okay. had, you know, difficulties in the past with drug abuse and um, mental illness as well. Right. You know, it doesn't show, you know, some people are sicker than others, and it, it, it's, it's, it's readily available. You can see it, they kind of wear it, but my mental illness is not worn. Right. It's there, you know, and even a fool seems wise when he keeps his mouth shut. So if you don't say much, people really won't recognize it, at least when it comes to me. But the reality of it is, I do suffer from mental illness that's unaddressed. Right. It needs to be addressed. And once I stop self-medicating, because it's not the drugs, it's 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 uh, it's why I'm taking the drug. Right. I'm saying, you know, I have to solve that. Then I won't have to take the drug. If I'm happy in my own skin and I'm okay, yeah, then I won't have to get high. Right, and really, that's what it is, and I've, I've met, it's truly uh, a mental illness. I suffer from PTSD and uh, depression, and it's untreated. Mm -hmm. So what I do is I treat it with like K two. I don't do heroin. I'm not. A, I don't smoke crack cocaine. I don't even drink anymore. I gave it all up. Right. You know, but the only thing I do do is I smoke a little bit of K two, which is 
<laughs> and it's not that that's a good thing in any way a form of justification rationalization right. minimizing it's not a minimal it's not a small thing but the thing is i'm self-medicating right. my my depression with it right and that's just pretty much it and i go home go to sleep and you know hope that things will start to pan out i'm feeling a lot better health wise i mean the beginning of the year hopefully turn and burn and uh find a place to go you know odyssey house um I don't know. When when was the first time you ever did K2? Um, actually, last summer. The wow. first time. Yeah. March last summer on a 25th Street. First time ever. Wow. I was a crackhead for many, many years of my life. Yeah. You know, and that ultimately, that's what destroyed me and my wife, you know. Right. You make all these promises, and then, you know, when you're, when you're hooked on a drug, I mean, the paved, the road to hell was paved with good intentions. Mm. I mean, you, you... You know, where the rubber meets the face without works is dead. Mm-hmm. Where the rubber meets the road is when, you know, what you're saying meets your actions. Right. And, wow. you know, sometimes that's harder, easy, very easily said, but the discipline to have it done right. which is really where the rubber meets the road and where my problem is. Because yeah. I don't have the discipline to say, you know what I mean? Yeah. I don't. And I have such a poor self-esteem and low confidence in myself because of things and you know, it's just, it wears on me. It's like a weight that you yeah. carry. It's like a sack that I have on Bubby. And it, it's really hurting me. It's not helping me at all. Right. Are you alone out here in New yes, York? Yes, I am. My mother's dead. My father's dead. My brother's... I've been, I have one brother alive, and I haven't spoken to him in 11 years. Wow. And he lives... The last time I heard, I believe he's in Vermont or something. I, yeah. It's, it's, but it's been a long time. I have no family. I'm literally all alone. Nothing else. Wow. Bottom of the back. Last one. When I die, I don't even have a place to really sign my body. As I tell you, you know, you say, where are you going to go? I go, oh, my wife don't want nothing to do with me. So I don't know. It's done. Yeah. So, wow, I'm so sorry, man. Really well, cool. you know, you, you reap what you sow. And it's, it's still no excuse because although I'm really never alone. I have to understand that. You know, it's realistically, I mean, carry many names and hats in this world. But the first and foremost, I'm a child of God. You know, and I have an opportunity here in this life. And that's a big word, opportunity. And I'm, I, I gotta, where I stand now is to try to stay current. Yeah. Stop living in that past and dwell and drinking. I didn't like living it the first time. Why am I dwelling it? Yeah. You know? So I need to stay current right here in my boots with you here right. on Sunday, headed towards Christmas in New York. Right. And be that way mentally instead of drifting, because what happens is I drift. Yeah. Sometimes I'll sit here and I might be with you. Yeah. And I'm literally 80 miles away. Wow. I'm sitting here and I'm... It's not present in no. the moment at all. No. Yeah. I noticed that and I say, i got to stop that drifting. Let my mind go drifting off into something that it's morbid thinking. you got to come back up here and stay here present. That way. Right. Because it's not what got me here. It's what's going to get me out. Right. Right? Right, man. Hey, so, yeah, in my bag, I have a blanket from... Uh, this uh, company called Homeless Penthouse. So, yeah. I with my man's, he just got the Homeless Penthouse blanket. Ah. <laughs> so cool! Yay! All right, man. No, for real, that's my stuff. Yo, that's my stuff. Yeah, it's a nice blanket for sure. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man. No, Merry Christmas too, man. Uh-huh. You, yeah, you. <laughs> no, Yo, it looks really good on you. No, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much, bro. No, yeah. No, no shade, man. This is gonna come in handy. I use this. I'm gonna put this on my bed tonight. No right. And here, so man. Much. Man, I'll tell you what, brother. How about that? I gotta have to take this back to the house, too. You know why? Yeah. These guys don't want to try to get it off me. Here, man. Here's. I got 20 bucks. Thank you so much. Here. Thank you, bro. Do the best. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah man. No, pack. feed yourself with that, man. Don't, yes. don't abuse it. Give me a pack of cigarettes. Yeah. yeah. Because this way I can stay in. Right. I don't have to go back out. You know? Right, right. Just hide them so nobody knows I have them. Right. Every once in a while, I'll walk out and smoke a half of one and go back inside. Because cigarettes will make you go out. The right. Make me, I got to go out. You know, I, I've, seen, I've seen friends go fucking down the block just to chase somebody for one bogey, you know? Like, I've seen yeah. it, you know? So, so thank I get you so it. much, man. No, I, thank you, man. Truly, truly. <laughs> Yeah, man. This is so cool.
That's a nice one too, man. Really? I thought it was just going to be a regular blue blanket. This is a really nice no, one. No, yeah, definitely. We designed it ourselves and everything, so. That's so cool. Yeah, man. Definitely. All right, brother. Yeah, Merry Christmas, bro. You too. And stay safe out here, man. Yeah. You Keep your really got your name on it. <laughs> definitely, right. man. But I appreciate that. I really do. You put me on the map. But it, <clears throat> sometimes just speaking to someone right. and talking, like, right. you know, it, it means a lot. Yeah. Like I stand over there and I panhandle, right. and I stand there for a couple hours, man. And you know, they, like they don't even, they don't say hi, they don't say yes, they don't say no. They just keep walking like I'm not even there, like I'm just not there, right. you know. And sometimes, but in New York you have people with hearts, they really do. They go find them to take care of you and right. help you. You know what I'm saying? But. <laughs> I have created the blacksmith that bands the coals beneath the forge, which means I created this. I'm making that fire, I'm feeding it. I'm making uh, it worse. Instead of letting it burn out, yeah. I continue to feed that fire. Uh, and I, so I, it's self-inflicted at this point, Mr. Stu. Yeah. Now, you're doing it to yourself. Mm. So I cannot blame anyone else. But what happens is again, that falls on the now, I have to go back to my table and see what I got. And I have a lot on it. PTSD, uh, bipolar, ADHD, um, low confidence, poor self-esteem. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And it's, all these things just add to it. Yeah. You know? And then when you live like that, and then you have, uh, you may make some progress. It won't take much for someone to, you know, and th sometimes they don't even know that they're doing it. They'll hurt you by saying something evil or hurtful and that they think would just you know could laugh off yeah because you're just brushing it off right? but a person in my state right. doesn't do that right. and i'll latch onto it and it'll drag me down it'll right. just I'll, it'll stick and i'll say you know what he's right i am not worth it i'm a loser i, I beat that you're spineless you're gutless you're useless you're never going to be shit left why even try and i i mean literally there's a voice that talks to me like that and i have to stop that Wow. I have to stop that noise and say no. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's, it's sad to say, but that's true. Yeah. God and bless that's my God. life. Yeah. And I ignore it for long periods of time, but it's like a buoy that you push under water. Yeah. You push the buoy down with this hand and say, it's not there no more. It's not there. You can't see it. But as soon as I need this hand to rub my nose, yeah. whoop, the buoy came out. So there it is. It's still there. All right. Oh, let me hide that. Let me see that. Right. Keep that there. Okay, but guess what? As soon as I need this hand, I was right back up. So it never really goes away. All you do is just hide it better. Wow. Yeah, man. I mean, I can I, I can never even imagine that state. You know, like I spent 32 days without taking a shower. Oh. And I didn't brush my teeth and I didn't comb, didn't shave, and yeah. not a person, not one soul said a word to me. Not one person said, are you okay? Hey man, you know, you really... Not one person. I swear to God, you want to talk about a DC. Wow. 32 days and not one person said a word to me. Wow. Man, you think I can get your razor blade, buddy? You all right? Nope. Not one person said one thing to me. It's a cruel world, man. True. And if I didn't let, let get him up out of that, shake my head and go, Bruh. hey, Lester, stop it. Stop yeah. feeding that. Right. I would have... That's bad. That's a bad, bad, bad dude. place. No, man. I, I can only imagine. That's a bad I'll send you straight into like that's that's some hell right there. Yeah, that's know? that's that's crazy. That's where they lock you up for you know, and they leave you. Uh, they put you in the rubber room. Yeah, start doing stuff like that. All right. But you know, <clears throat> you don't want. <clears throat> that's when you know you're in trouble when you start to take a sickness and embrace the sickness. Mm. Now, now you really have nothing if you're reaching out for a sickness. Mm. You know, you must really be blind. And I almost reached out and embraced it. Instead of keep fighting it, no, no, that's not true. It's not true. You right. know what? Yeah, it is. And I embraced it. Right. And I sucked it in. Guess what? Woo. That was crazy. That was, that was almost brought me out of my mind. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Feed that. Wow. So you could. So you headed back to the Aladdin right now? Uh, well, I'm gonna go down here and get a cup of coffee. All right. So, I have to walk back over to. Um, Forty second of night, now I'm getting a pack of cigarettes, so I'm good for it. What? Yeah, man, I'm happy for that. <laughs> but, application, man. It's all about application for me. Work. Because, yeah, other than that, I'm a shit talker. 
<laughs> and there's a lot of that. Yeah. A lot of people. <laughs> yeah, you like the blanket though? No, it's all good. What's the sleeping situation you have right now? Like, you in a bunk bed? Um, uh, I live in a, yeah, it has a, it's a, it's a, it's a plastic, uh, a metal frame bed right. with a plastic mattress. Okay. It's about this thick. It's, it's a little plastic? Yeah. It's I mean, does it have a little oh, cushion the in it? Of, the inside of it is like a styrofoam. Ah. But the outside of it is plastic. Okay. The inside is styrofoam. Ooh. And it's a single man room, which is good. The heater gets, a, you know, it's good. Yeah. They put an air conditioner in my room because I have breathing issues. And other than that, oh man, it's, you know, they're very good people. They're, they're nice, nice people. The, the shelter itself is clean. Every once in a while you get, you know, where somebody gets a little extra special. And, but there's plenty of cleaning people there. And I got to say, they're great people there at the Aladdin. They're wonderful. And they've been really nice to me. They make sure I get my mail. Yeah. You know, they treat me with respect. You know, and, and that goes a long way. It does. Nobody, you know, way better. I was in the uh, Keener building out on uh, out on Ward Island. Yeah. Oh my God, brother. Whoa. I spent eight months eight months out there last year. Yeah. Oh my God, bro. Oh my God. That's like living in a zoo. That one was. <laughs> yeah, that was bad. But thank God, you know, we'll see. I'm looking at a program, though. Yeah. I gotta go this way, brother. Yeah, thank man. you. No, thank you, man. Oh, can I, can I get a thank you, homeless penthouse? Thank you, homeless. All right, let me get like this. <laughs> yeah. Let's see if I get it like this. Yeah. Well, I get it right. You ready? Yeah. Thank you, Pet. Thank you, homeless Pet. Thank you, homeless Pet. <laughs> oh, yeah, man. All right? Yeah. <laughs> have a good one, dude. Definitely have a good one. God bless. So that was that, guys. Uh, I'm so happy that I was able to get his life story and learn a lot about him and his past, you know? It's a very important that we're able to talk to these people that are homeless and in need of help because. They don't even have anybody to talk to. He was telling me that no one talked to him for 32 days straight when he didn't take a shower or didn't shave, you know? So hopefully I made his day. I hope he gets better, you know? But, you know, things like this give people hope. And, you know, I made his day and he made my day, honestly, so. It is what it is. It's Christmas. It's a holiday for giving. So, just make sure you uh, give people a chance. This is brought to you by Homeless Penthouse. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you.